Good. It's good to be home again. <laughs> and it's a privilege. And uh, I think um, don't underestimate relations. They are so important, especially when they relations should be, some of them should be a lifelong relation. Not only in marriage, but also with friends. So I love the fact that we are in relation with New Day already for 15 years. We are not a, 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 a something that flies by or only coming in as a blessing. We talk, uh, we, I am personally talk with Greg, let's say, every four weeks, six weeks. We have a conversation talking about how stuff is going on in personal life, church life, uh, nation, etc., etc. So it's very important to have those relations. Uh, they are important for you. They are important for the bigger picture. And... Um, so it's a wonderful opportunity to be here again. Looking at the last 15 years that we are aware of the fact what's happening in New Day, a lot of people went out of this church to plant churches. Great leaders. Besides that, a lot of people in this church were trained to be leaders and were sent out for smaller or longer trips into the nations. Agree? That's a privilege, yeah? And it's not the end of the day. I don't know why you're sitting in this meeting this morning, but God has, still has a plan with New Day and the people that are, that are sitting in those meetings. He wants to train you to release you. So you, you, you're in this morning, in this service, you, you are with a purpose in this meeting. God wants to train you to be able to send you to be a blessing to other people. Amen? <laughs> I see somebody mm, mm, offering finance. It says it was that's difficult. It says in the clip, huh? That's the easy part. Giving yourself to him. That's something else. So we had a guest in a few months ago and he was talking about on what table are you sitting? The table of obedience or the table of reasoning? So where are you this morning? Are you reasoning with God about your personal life and where you should go to and what you think he should do in your life? Or are you sitting on the table of obedience? Yes, Lord, I surrender. What's your will? Where are you sitting? I'm not going to ask to divide the church in two parts. This is going to be the table of reasoning, and this is going to be the table of obedience. The proof is in the pudding, eh? So tell me how you live, and I will tell you in what table you are in. You look in the mirror. What table are you on? Reasoning with God and fighting with God, or are you on the table of obedience? And are you willing to follow Him? But I think this church, in its DNA, is a bold and courageous church, because it's raising up leaders, to be sent out to plant churches to advance the kingdom for Jesus Christ. Are you proud of it? Yes. Half of it. Are you proud of it? Yes. You can't imagine the impact you have as a church. You can't imagine what offering of five or ten or hundred rent or a thousand rent is going to do into the nations. You've got no clue. We as a local church, we exist next year 30 years because we were planted from South Africa into our nation, Holland. Cornerstone, planted an eldership couple into a fort house in our village 30 years, almost 30 years ago. From our church, by raising up leaders, planting churches, I think at least seven or eight churches are planted in the nation. And I know some of the churches have more than 500 people in their meetings. So let's add it all up in the last 30 years at least. And the visitors that we had coming in and people sometimes, people, I don't know why they like breaking up relations and start somewhere else again from church to church. I don't know what's the fun of that. But through that one couple and the finance that that church put behind it for the first six months to a year, 
the gospel reached a few thousand people in our nation. It's important to get feedback while you're doing what you're doing. Why are you offering and why are you sending Greg and other guys out to, into the nations? Why are you planting churches to support them for as long as you can, as long as they need? Why? To advance the kingdom. Because do you feel blessed to be part of this church? Are you blessed by the fact that you're part of this church? And it's getting quieter. I want a little bit more. We are supposed to be a blessing to help families, to help marriages, to help people to find their destiny in life. And you know, we quite often think it's about our job, our career, our house, our marriage, our children, etc. God has a much bigger picture. We are too often are busy with our plans, our life, and what we can see. And God says, come closer to me. I will show you a bigger picture. And we, he is inviting us all to be part of the bigger picture and his plan. And if we step into his plan, we will be surprised at what God can do through us to be a blessing into the nations, and we will get rewarded for it when we come to him. It's not for nothing. Everything has a purpose in the kingdom of God. If we obey, it will bear fruit into eternity. We will, we will get rewards. Or not. That's actually up to you. God is promising if you obey in this life, I will reward you into the future, in eternity. So, for people, I think one of the basic things, because we can talk about going, etc., etc., but what basically are people needing? to connect, to be able to build relations, is that people need to be seen. Do you see me? If people come into a church, in a home group, or in your life, they want you to look in their eyes, because then they know they make a contact. It's not only that you see people, or want to be seen, people want to be heard. Can I tell you my story? Are you listening to me? Are you interested in me at all? Because if you are, that, make, that, 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 that tells me that you value me. People want to be valued. People want to belong somewhere. Everybody is searching to something that we lost in our relation with God, and by that we lost something between ourselves as, as humankind. Because that, that, that unity, the perfect unity in, in, in heaven, we lost. And we are still searching in life to find those beautiful relations trustworthy, safe, etc., etc., and the church is the place where God says, here I am, here I am, come closer to me, help me to change your character and personality, to become more like me, so when people come in, they will meet me through you. Our brains are hardwired for connection with God and people. That's the way God made us. But it's also, it seems to be quite difficult because shame and guilt are building boundaries between us. We don't feel worthy to have a relation with somebody else. And the brokenness in mankind is, is bigger than we quite often are able to acknowledge. But God can restore that and renew that. He, his love and His grace is bigger than our brokenness and our shame and guilt even between amongst the, uh, uh, as, as, as a church member and colleagues during the week. So what do we do quite often when people come into the church for the, for the first time or the first few weeks? We, we will tell them quite quickly, you're welcome, great you're here. We will tell them what, you, what we believe, how they should live, and how to live a godly life, isn't it? It's something that happens quite quickly. If people are joining a church, are coming to visit the church, we will quite quickly tell them what we believe and uh, uh, we will tell them how to live a godly life. The how, to do what and when and how. Isn't it? But we hardly tell them why. You need to know before you grow. 
as a, as, as a humankind. To, in, for maturity, you need to know before you grow. What do you need to know? Who I am. Is this a safe place? Is it an opportunity, a place where I can grow and, be, and, and, and develop? And I don't have to be perfect. I can make mistakes, but, and they still love me. So that's the place where I can grow. If it's too hard and I have to qualify like with tests, it's not a safe place because if I fail, what will happen? We need a safe place where we belong and where we can be in a safe place where we can grow, where people hear and listen and look at me and see who I am, see where I am at in life and help me forward to grow in my personality, my identity and my faith in Jesus Christ. As a Christian. So, quite often, so this is a summary of what Paul is, uh, is doing in Ephesians 4 verse 1. As a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. That's where we quite often start. I urge you to live a life according to your calling. We forget the first three chapters. Let's you know, with, I, I put a, uh, above the, the, the sermon, actually, when I was busy with it, caring and daring and sharing. Caring means you've got a place where it's safe, a safe place, a connection. I need to be able to connect with others. It's a place where I can find trust, a place to, for myself and others. It's a trustworthy place and a security place. It has to be safe. That's the place where you can care. Or that's the place where it's going to be cared for me. Where I can be and develop and grow. A church should be a place where they take care of you, isn't it? Amen? But only if you are a church that only cares for people, they won't grow. Because to be able to grow, you have to dare people. And daring, it says for encouragement, provocation, challenges, to take the risk, to dare, to go on a journey. Caring is actually the secure base that you need to be able to grow, to mature, so you can dare and take on a journey with God in faith. So God is taking care of us in a most wonderful way, a mind-blowing way. So... This is not that I made it up myself, it's, it's that I received in that sense from Scripture because I see how God is taking care of us before He's daring us, before He's asking us to share, before Paul is urging us to live a certain kind of life, before God is giving us security. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, and read it. This is a chapter for the last few months for myself. It's mind-blowing and I can't still try to comprehend what's actually in those verses. I still don't understand and I'm asking the Holy Spirit also for this morning, come O Holy Spirit, give us revelation what this means for me, for New Day, for the body of Christ. Because this is mind-blowing. Verse 3, praise to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Starts with praising God. Why is he praising God? Because who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Question. What does it mean to be blessed in the spiritual realm with all spiritual blessings? Anybody a clue? Because else I will stop at this verse for this morning because then you've got homework to do. What are the spiritual blessings? Sorry? Gifts of the Spirit? Teaching? He's explaining it further on. Besides the Spirit, etc. And the gifts. But I want you to see, God chose, before you existed, to bless you with all you can imagine spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. So where are the blessings? Where do we live our life? So what's the connection? We have to live with our spirit in the heavenlies because that's our secure base. 
God loves us. He's blessing us. From that blessing, I can change my life on earth in the way I look at it, the way I live it, because I know I'm blessed by God with everything I need to live a godly life. Happy? No excuses? So your brokenness and past can be a reality, and they are probably, like in my life, but I said, comma, but I am blessed. My past is not my future. My past should determine my present and my future. He blessed us with all spiritual blessings so I can live a godly life. Is it hard work? Yes. Why? Because I don't like it to surrender to His will. I'd rather sit on the table of reasoning than on the table of obedience. Because my heart is too broken. But I have to decide every day, a new day, for a new day with God to choose to sit on the table of obedience. Please. That, that's why you're part of New Day. Because every day you have a new day to make the same decision. On what table are you going to sit? He blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in, in, in Jesus Christ. Yes. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. He chose you. What's your name, young man? Jared. Beautiful name. Jared. Before, before God created heaven and earth, before God created the universe, he had a book. And I don't know if it was a day or whatever. God, I don't know how his timetable works, but to explain it for us, there was a day that God decided to put some names in his book. Jared, 2023. God says, I make a decision. Before anything existed, I make a decision to love you, to forgive you, to make you my son. To give you a guarantee, the Holy Spirit, in the time that you're living in this life. And I promise you, and I'm telling you, you already have an inheritance in heaven for eternity. It's my decision. You, di you didn't exist, so you couldn't do anything about it. Because you were clueless, I don't know where you were. But, but, but God made a decision to chose you. Isn't that amazing? You're chosen. Let's celebrate. You're chosen before creation to live with Him in, until eternity. If that doesn't blow your mind. <laughs> if we don't get excited about these verses, how on earth are we going to reach the world? This is good news. This is the best news you can imagine. Because you and your neighbors, nobody can do anything about their salvation because this was his decision. We only have to present the good news to them and say, hey, Jared, I have good news for you. He knows you and he made a choice to come today in your life, and I'm, I, I'm just using you as an example, so I don't know if you're born again or whatever, so I'm not judging anything, so please, can, can I use your name and, as an example? Okay. God, let, let, let's, let's make it today. God is by me presenting you something that you can't imagine. It's bigger, more beautiful, more gracious than you can ever imagine. And in the, if, if you say yes to me, I will protect you, I will guide you, I will give you the Holy Spirit. You will never be alone, you will never doubt again about your eternity and salvation, ever. Once born again, ever, for always born again, once chosen, always chosen. Time to celebrate. <laughs> eh? How on earth can we, sometimes during worship, trying our best? To clap with the musicians. 
Worship starts from your heart, from a conviction. It's not singing songs. Worship is a conviction that I'm, I'm, I'm chosen by God before creation. Praise starts from the fact that I believe I'm forgiven before I existed. Mind-blowing! And I will keep it in my mind until and I'm praying, Lord, give me revelation what this means because it will turn me upside down and it's growing, but I need more of that revelation in my own life so I can celebrate daily your goodness, your grace, and your mercy for me, but, and also for others, that it will give me courage to go out and tell you, don't live your own life on your own terms. It's not wise. It's not wisdom. It's actually quite stupid, because you don't look happy, and I can tell you why, because you are the king of your own life instead of Jesus Christ. Obey Him. Then you will be happy. Then you will put a smile on your face. Even when circumstances are, can be difficult, you have a smile on your face because you know who you are in Him. And when He is for you, what can be against you? Now don't say it too easy. Believe it. Take ownership of this truth. If God is for you, what can be against you? Yeah, physically and in this life, stuff can be against me. I can become sick or whatever. Hey, it's only partly this life and I don't want to make it too simple, but it's reality for me. It's not about this life. It's about eternity. It's about the fact that He chose me and He's bringing me home. And on the journey in between, I can be a blessing for other people or not. And I can be happy or not. I can be joyful or not. It's my decision. But I want to take this truth and take ownership of it because that's what I think Jesus wants for us all. If people walking in a church where oh, the whole church is celebrating this truth, <laughs> they will fall to their knees because they will taste something in a the meeting day are searching for, but they never knew they were searching for, and they will say, I don't know what you guys have, but what you have, I need. In love, He predestined us for adoptions to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance to His pleasure and His will. God had pleasure to chose you, to forgive you, to call you His son and daughter. Isn't that amazing? His pleasure, His will, not your will, His will. Don't ask God to become part of your plan and your will. And a lot of people are struggling. God is not answering my prayers. No, because they are yours, not His. The Bible says, you, you don't receive because you're not praying according to my will. You're, you're praying according to your own wills. That's why you're not receiving. So question, if, they, if God is not answering your questions, go back to God and ask Him, what do you want me to pray in this situation? Don't put a sour face on because you don't get what you want. Surrender to God and say, Lord, I want to live a godly life and you have to help me by your Holy Spirit to guide my life and I will surrender. I will sit on the table of obedience and else teach me to sit on that table so I can grow. To the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given to us in the one He loves. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins in accordance to His riches of His grace that He lavished on us. My language at home is Dutch, so English is not my language, so I don't understand all the words. So what, what does lavish, lavished mean? What does that word mean? Sorry? Pour out, giving abundantly. So, somebody else? Help me. What does it mean? Lavished. Lavished? Is it overwhelming? It's more than you need? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Can we come in agreement? It's more than you need? Overwhelming? So when He gives us forgiveness of our, all our sin, and He lavished that forgiveness and grace over us, how much is it? More than you need. Amen? Can you imagine? 
He's forgiving you more than the sins you've done and will do until as long as you live. Isn't that amazing? So why are you doubting His forgiveness? Why are you still bound sometimes by sin or by shame or by guilt? Why? Because we don't go back to those scriptures. We don't take ownership of this wonderful news that He forgave me, not only, how do you say just just enough. Now he lavished it over us more than you can sin. That's his grace. That's his mercy. That's the good news that we can bring to other people if we start believing it for ourselves. Because if you don't believe it for yourself, what's the message to another person? Not good news. Because you still try to live up to get that forgiveness. And God says, oh, no, 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 no. Stop it. I'm forgiving you. And it was already before you existed. Before creation. I made a plan. I made a purpose. I wrote your name down in my heart for eternity. Lord, please. Come with your Holy Spirit. Break the works of darkness over lives that are sitting in this room. Take away the brokenness, the pain and the hurt and disappointments of the lives of people in you or others so they can receive this word. Your grace and your love. Not only for today, but for the rest of their lives. You're forgiven. And it's leveraging, overwhelming you with the grace and forgiveness. With all wisdom and understanding, he made us to us the ministry of his will known according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be into effect when the times reaches their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth. This is future. Before creation, he made a decision to chose you, to forgive you, to make you his son. That, that was in the past. That was God's decision. Then, in a certain moment in your life, he's introducing Jesus Christ to you. And the word came, and you received the word, and it was his purpose, and that time you were born again. And that's, not, that, that's, that's the first part is he's chose. Second part is he's revealing himself in your life. Third part, he's telling us the future. One day, when Jesus comes back, everything will be in unity and perfect harmony. That's why, one of the reasons, why I keep on doing what I'm doing in him. Because I've got a future. I've got nothing to lose anymore because he already promised me the future. You've got nothing to lose. You, th you think you can lose your job or your money or your health, whatever. It's, it's only in those 80 years that you're living in this life. He's talking about eternity. Look at the big picture. God is challenging you. He says, I will, I will, care, I will take care of you. So the caring is his part. Now he says, I want to dare you to live up what I made you. I give you a safe place. I give you the promises. Now I dare you to live up. To who you are in me. I bless you with all spiritual blessings. I called you my son and you're my daughter. I forgave you. You've got access to me, the God of creation. <laughs> in him we are chosen, having been predestined according to his plan. Of him who works out everything in, in conformity with the purpose of his will. If God decided to choose you, to make you a son, to help you, to grow in maturity, He will do the work in you only. There's one condition, the condition. You have to tell Him, here I am. Sitting on the table of obedience. Work with your spirit in your word, in and through me. Allow God to work through you and in you. He is doing the working. 
You don't have to work up yourself in your holiness and whatever you want to try to do, what you try to do. Allow God's Spirit in you to work and change you from the inside. And He will do the work because it says, of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will for your life. It's quite chill. Relax. Come and sit on this table. I dare you to come and sit on this table. In order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be, uh, might, might be for the praise of His glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked with Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit who is the, a deposit, a guarantee of the inheritance, until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. You receive the deposit and guarantee. So all those verses up front, before creation, I chose you, I made a plan through my son, you will find forgiveness, not, not just enough, but more than enough, more than you can sin, my, my grace and my mercy are more, more bigger, bigger than you can imagine, even for your life, and it's for the m mankind. It's bigger and more, so there's always more than enough of my love and grace and forgiveness to help you to not only believe it once, but I will give you insurance. A deposit. A deposit is something that you receive because you know the rest will come. You are certain of the rest because you received the deposit. Amen? That's why the bank, the bank wants a deposit when you buy a house. Because now you're obligated to pay off the rest. Insurance. God knows how it works. He's giving you insurance. To, to help you for the rest of your life that you live on earth. That you're not alone. And that you've got the guarantees, that you've got the help and the insurance to be a child of God and to be forgiven. Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If we take this scripture, this chapter 1, Verse 3 to 14. Chew on it, on it. Take ownership of it. In the coming, maybe months, get revelation of those scriptures. More and more, we will be able to share something to the world. Caring, daring, sharing. But you can't share if, you, if, if you're not being taken care of God. You can't share if God is not daring you to live out from that position of a new identity in Him. After that revelation, that ownership, by God, that you know that God is taking care of you in every aspect, then there comes a time that God can say, like Paul did in chapter 4, now I urge you, now I urge you to live a godly life. Because I took care of you, I challenged you, I gave you everything to be able to share. Now, 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 I'm there. Now, 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 I urge you, new day, again, to live up your godly calling. To raise up leaders, to plant churches, to be a blessing towards each other. Love each other, care for each other. Love each other. If you're lacking love, just ask Him for more love in your life. We need to know before we grow. We need to know before we go. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our meeting today. Um, can I just ask two things? The first is, if today the, the message has in any way been useful to you, would you mind just maybe liking it or putting uh, perhaps a statement down or a comment down that we can know how the ministry has helped you, maybe a 
thumbs up. Maybe you can subscribe to the channel, do whatever, just so we can know what impact this message may be having on you. And secondly, you may be someone who's saying, Greg, I hear you. And this, this, this hope that Jesus has for us can come into my heart and it can change me. But the reality is that I don't even know if I know Jesus. I want to say two things to you right away. The first is he's near you right now. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that he is the Lord and if you confess him with your mouth, you will be saved. Which means you just need to, where you are, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, even now. And just say, Lord, here I am. I recognize who you are. I confess my sin to you. I acknowledge you as Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, the Son of the living God. And I want to follow you. I want to become a disciple of yours. I want to, I want to give my life to you, Lord. And you can pray that prayer right now between you and the Lord. Secondly, you can get hold of us. Um, you can see the telephone number. You can get hold of us and say, hey, I've given my life to the Lord. Can you help me from here on out? And we could either send you some material. We can uh, put you in touch with a really good church near you. Uh, if you live in our area, you can come to us. You can follow us on YouTube. But it is good to get connected into the family of God, to get connected into a local church, that your life changes being surrounded with the family of God. Please stay in touch. God bless you.